they started c- coming around, <coughs> I had this uh, experience one day. I was just laying in the bed at the hospital, and the doorway there was a light that had this like plexiglass little like uh, dimpled glass to mute the light behind it, right? It was like a fluorescent light, and then I was I just looked at that, which I had looked at it meant probably a couple of times before, but this time I went in somewhere, something happened, and uh, I was introduced to a, uh, it was like a, a, it was like a dream state, but it was very, it had a lot of quality of, of being more real than this, this dream state, yeah, and as I, what happened is I started to learn I had qualities there, and every time I went back into that state, I'd still have the same qualities I had, I, I had found out about in the previous dream time, yeah, which is I could fly through, I could fly around, I could fly through people when it hurt them. I could go right through bodies and stuff like that. Well, it went on for a while. I can't gauge it how long it went, but I, I just lay there and I'd look into that light and I'd just go off and I'd be in this other world. And it was pretty extensive. Some of it you could say was hellish. Some of it was pretty cool, but uh, very more than more real than anything I've ever experienced here. Then had a real a sense of reality that you know a real strong sense. So this one time I uh, I flew to Florida. I was in a hospital in Long Island. I flew to Florida and I had a guru when I was younger. <clears throat> a guy named Guru Maharaj, he was like 14 years old. He was a little kid. I met him when I was 13. He was 13. I was like 19, I guess. And uh, I had been following him for a few years, and I had left. And actually, the night I got hit by the car, I had tried to go back to one of their satsangs. <clears throat> and on the way home from that, uh, I got stopped at a bar, and I had some quaaludes and Graham and Ye, And then I went, left, went home, and I went back to the bar thinking I was missing a big party had erupted there, and nothing actually had happened except... I had a meeting with a Chevy Monte Carlo that I wasn't aware of, and I had that, that happen. <laughs> and I didn't meet it that well, so it ran over me again, so I really met it. <clears throat> and um, so I was, uh, so I was tripping, I went to Florida, and I could fly, and there was a, he was having a, a talk with people who had kids, followers who had kids, because he had kids. And he had a little raised die, not much higher than everyone else. And he was sitting there with his couple of kids, and there's kids all around. And I started flying around the room, and I caused a commo- you know, commotion. You know, people, whoa! You know, and I was trying to tell him, don't worry, I can fly through you. And ah, I went through them. And this, uh, then I landed on the die, and I looked at him, and he represented something to me in this dream that he's the one who knew, you know, or something. And so I was looking at him, and uh, you know. Plaintively, I was basically telepathically asking them, I mean, what's up? You know, like, I mean, what's it? What's the truth? What's the answer? And he looked at me and he had a little smile came on his face and he says, uh, you'll, never, you'll never get it. Yeah? And when he said that I was never going to get it, it really sunk in that I was never going to get it. Yeah? That the way I was, seemingly, the way I. Can you close that door while you're going out? Thank you, sir. It's all right. The way I was, seemingly, I would never be able to embrace what I was truly looking for. I was never going to be able to get it. I was never going to be able to understand it. And it was crushing to the sense of self, you know, totally crushing. I mean, I remember the feeling I had. It was just so, I was so crestfallen, yeah. And uh, and what happened is then I suddenly, something happened. They, they got a donation up and they gave me money. Oh, they gave me a ticket to come back to Florida. Like, I was going to go back to the hospital, I guess, take care of my affairs, and then fly back to Florida. So I, I suddenly woke up in the hospital bed, and I was asking all the nurses, there's a ticket, I got a ticket for Miami, and they, had, they were all looking through the, the uh, act, you know, acting like they were looking through the, <laughs> the sheets and everything, couldn't find the ticket. So I flew back there somehow, you know, I went back in, I flew there, and they gave me money. And I came back in the hospital, and I, where's the money? You know what I mean? And there was no money there. So I flew back again, and this time I was flying there, and then the people were holding me in this group the, by my legs, and the nurses were pulling me by my elbow into the other reality. And it seemed to be like I had a choice, 
And I, in a way, the choice was to go into the reality of the hospital. Somehow, for some, I don't know why, but it just went that way. And as soon as that, that happened, I never went back again. There was no more, no more dreams like that ever again in the stay I was there, you know? What was I trying to say? Oh, the whole idea, that whole idea of getting it, yeah? The whole idea, and some, for some of us, we give different names for what that is that we're trying to get, but there's a lot of juice around it, and I had a lot of juice around it, a lot of uh, longing and yearning and nobility and wah. And you know what? None of that means squat, really. You're not going to get it. You're not going to acquire it. You're not going to have it. You're not going to domesticate it so it fits your frame. Yeah? The only way is is to realize you're not that which thinks it, that, that thinks it wants it, that thinks it, it believes it has to do something to get there. Yeah? It's going to have to acquire it. It's going to have to be vigilant concerning it because it'll be able to be, it'll be so fragile of a visitation that whatever, if I do the wrong thing, it will be gone. It won't be available. And if I do the right thing, it may not even be available. Yeah? It's going to be a very precarious situation, but I'm going to be really relevant in all of it. Yeah, me, Paul. That whole point is that's not so. What this message is pointing to is you're inherently that. Yeah? That I would say humbly, that which is what you're seeking. You are that. It's already available at all times, right where you are. But not as, or not to you. To a you. It's not going to be acquired through a you. It's not going to be acquired by a you. It's not going to be acquired for the you. Yeah? It's the dismissal of the idea that you're a you that opens you up to the possibility that's always possible. Because it's not like hidden. It's like those statements, this is the open secret. What, how could something be a secret if it was open? The whole point of a secret is only a few people know. Yeah? Or it's the gateless gate. How could it be a gate that I have to find and then maybe pay a toll to get through to enter the kingdom of heaven? If it's a gateless gate, then what's the point? Exactly. There's no entry. There's no requirements to be fulfilled. You're already based on that requirement. You are that. Yeah? You are that awareness. Right now, the awareness has been subjugated by a mental process that has claimed to be the one who's aware. And once it claims to be the one who's aware, you become seemingly unaware of a lot of important, relevant uh, information. And you get very hyper-aware of stuff that doesn't mean squat, usually. Yeah? Usually a whole lot of information about what's not happening, be it the past or the future. And then now, that little snow thing, whatever they call it, is just agitated all the time. Yeah? We're just agitated, and like a great Zen master said, you can't use activity to find stillness. No, it'll just be activity. Yeah? There's no way you're going to find a super secret uh, segment of this formatted way of approaching things that's going to work in this, because there's no approach to it. Yeah? I don't care how slick it is, or how thousands of years old it is, or it's, it's, the, it's not the secret that was revealed in 1998 through the book, it's the super secret of 2014. It doesn't matter. None of that is going to work because it's defined by a failed format. A format that makes you a something and makes something else a something. Yeah? When the whole point is, there's no way the tune is that we are. <coughs> we are just not me. I have to have a you for there to be a me. Yeah? This is like a... What we are is actually a subjective-objective paradigm. We take ourselves to be a one, but the only way we can have a feeling of a one is the other. Yeah? The only, like they say in that old Zen treatise, the subject needs to have an object to be the subject, and the object needs to have a subject to be the object. Yes? They're in cahoots. You know what I mean? So in this way, in this sense of two-ness, you're never going to squish two-ness into oneness. It won't fit. Yeah? The point is, if you're not the two-ness, what may you possibly be? It may dawn on you that you're the oneness. Well, it's not only like the word oneness, but you're, you're that. And then basically, if you're that, you know what? That's that. 
It's like you're that, and then another that, and that. That, you're that, that's that. Yeah? Or as like they say in the Bible, God says, I am that I am. Yeah? I am that I am. That, that I am that you can sense right now, I am that I am. Yeah? What? Yeah. I am that I am. You can't see the I am that I am because you are the I am that I am. Yeah? You're looking from it right now. <clears throat> That's why every time we turn our form of looking to find it, we're blind to it. Yes? The form of looking that we're in is self-centered. It's a form of looking that is basic premise for it to be a form of looking. It has to deny the seeing. Yeah? <clears throat> so all the while you are trying to apply this form of looking to find the seeing, good luck. The only thing you can do is make the seeing into something. Yeah? And the seeing is actually truly nothing. It cannot grasp the nothingness of it. That form of looking is going to make it a thing. Conceptual, yeah, so your idea of the truth, your idea of nirvana, your idea of realization, your idea of love, your idea of whatever, it's always going to be your idea in that form of looking. If you're not that, which seems to be looking this way, voila, that could be the scene. It could dawn on you in a nanosecond, yeah? It can make such an impression that that impression will not be washed away by all the events and all the times and all the circumstances and all the situations. It will be a baseline that's constantly on, on re-looping, like in that movie we saw. You hit the base and it, and it just keeps playing infinitely. Boom, 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 boom. So all the other songs, you'll see the basic theme is just boom, I am, I am. I am that, I am, I am, I am, I am that, I am, I am, I am, I am, that, 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 I am. <laughs> ba <-bum. laughs> you know? Always go back to it. It'll be the underlying theme that'll be playing throughout this freaking thing you call your life. Always. Yeah? All your little stories and all your little tributaries that lead you, I was here and I want to get there. Ba -ba 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 -ba. The same baseline here, there, everywhere. Yeah? <clears throat> Every time it's like that thing we use with the, the game board. <clears throat> the game is defined by who's on the board. And if you believe you, you, if you have a feeling that you're the doer and that you're the thinker and you're the feeler right now, that you're feeling these feelings, this idea of being a long lasting independent separate entity is feeling these feelings right now, is thinking the thoughts that may be hurt right now, right? Is doing the actions that may occur is participating a huge role in this event that's happening, if that's the feeling that you're starting from, you're on square three. Yeah? From square three, the game board is going to look a whole lot different than if you saw it from square zero. <clears throat> yeah? If you start at square three, the game board of life is like, life is happening to me. That's how it's interpreted, yeah? You can't escape it. Life is happening to me. From square zero, the influence of square zero, life is happening. Totally different game. Totally different game. Life is happening. Yeah? And so, okay, let's see what happens is, after the, <clears throat> you've been living from the third square, and now you're at square nine, and then you have this bottom, let's say, based on the addiction of mind to alcohol and drugs, called alcoholism. So maybe something happens and life has a collapse and you're on square nine. And what happens is when you're totally broken down and totally humbled, what's the sense is your square zero. And then maybe you're on square 23 and you've been doing a, a six-month retreat and you have a moment of the absence of self and that's square 23. It has, it's, got, it's in a temple, a lot of gold and, you know, fucking orange and stuff like that. <laughs> and then the mind hits it, square 23, and what happens? You are immediately, as if it took no time, on square zero. Okay? Now let's say square 44, you're cynical about all the spiritual practices. You've been meditating in the same group for 25 years and all the people have been doing it with you keep telling the teacher, it doesn't look like anything really has happened in these 25 years. So now you're totally almost to the point of being exhausted by all these paths. You're on square 53 and then it collapses again, this house of cards, which, this little house of cards which you're blowing up. 
<laughs> you're doing, it's your wind, it's your energy that's making it seem like it's newly painted and has like little curtains on the windows. It has nothing to do with the house, it's you, yeah, in a sense, of the mind. <clears throat> Let's say that collapses, square 53, and you're rocketed into the immediacy of where you've always been, and then what that, where that is? Square zero. What happens? After a while, you gotta get it, there's only square zero. The square six only appeared to be so, based on you. When that you got weakened enough, it didn't appear to be so. What actually was revealed to always be so was square zero. It'll happen at square six, square two, square three, square seven, square eight. It doesn't freaking matter. The imitation is always available. Wherever you think you are is what you are, right there. It's always there, yeah. It always can be relied upon. It can always be, it can always be felt fall back on. Because it's never, never not there. Yeah? And the whole thing, all the squares on this game board, after square zero, the only thing they can reach, the highest level they can reach is appearance. And they have to, that their appearance, if it seems real, is dependent on the, on the, uh, the boot, so to speak, on the Eiffel Tower, you know, and Monopoly, on those little pieces. The piece is what gives the square the meaning. And then it lives as if that square has a real meaning that it can impose on the piece. So when it lands on Balkan Place, Baltic Place, it really believes it's on Baltic Place. Then also when it lands on the boardwalk, it goes, wow, I'm on the boardwalk, but immediately starts worrying, will I be on the boardwalk later on? You know, I'm going to lose the boardwalk and go back to Baltic Place. So there's a lot of agitation in all the moves, yes? But in fact, <coughs> when they're seen through, Immediately, you see they only appeared to be so, not on their own volition, but they appeared to be so to you. Yeah? They can't appear to be so, they can only appear to be so to you. There's something going on in some of us right now that's appearing to be so to them, but not to everyone else. Yes? We all have our own little private Idaho that we're fucking involved with right now. <laughs> And it's very difficult to, to communicate because the ones that aren't in that Idaho, they're in their own private Nebraska or something. They can't get what you're fucking worried about because it's not what they're worried about. <laughs> so they have an immunity to your Idaho and you have an immunity to their Nebraska. Yeah? But the whole point is <clears throat> the true immunity isn't just to be immune to yours and yet be totally be fallen or, or smoted by mine to be free from both of those. Realizing that the only way it can seem to be so, it has to have a you to seem to be so too. And if you're not that you that it's seeming to be so too, it won't seem to be so. Then what are you going to do? Find out. You're going to have a lot of time on your hands. Yeah. A lot of possibilities that weren't being entertained a second before are going to be available. Yeah? You're gonna see red is red and blue is blue. A lot of the confusion will be, will like, it'll be like a, a mist that gets blown out. You'll see things very clearly. Yeah? With no thought or effort on your part, with none. All your role is, is to find out why this mind, this aspect of mind expresses, you can note what's happening. You have that little, that this quality, this apparatus has the quality to note what is happening through it, yeah? But it is not the cause of what's happening through it. It's just an afterthought. It's just a voice box, yeah? We were at a meeting we shared at the last week where, I hope this lady never listens to these things, uh, she was at a, a recovery meeting and she was talking about... Uh, she was fantasizing about being in a limousine, snorting coke, you know, whatever. For maybe there's a hot tub in the limousine too. Like she's going to be able to do it infinitely, you know, and going on and on and on and on. And then, then all it, all it was doing, she doesn't get any other bonanza of the fantasy. She gets the guilt and the shame for the one who had the fantasy. Yeah, this is the bondage of self. Yeah. You get a, you get a, you get like a, a non-nutritional 
breakfast cereal. You don't even get the cereal, you just get the box, the fantasy of the Coke and the Lindsay. And what, what you, the real feeling you're going to produce is going to be the guilt and shame about it because of the, uh, being the owner of those thoughts when you had nothing to fucking to do with it. Yeah? Your only role in that is there was a hearing of the thoughts. And it ain't you hearing the thoughts. It's consciousness hearing the thoughts. You have no ability to hear. Your ear has no ability to hear. <laughs> if you were dead, your ear wouldn't be hearing a damn thing. Someone could come and take your ear out or get the ear canal in the ear and put it in a live body and it would facilitate hearing, but it ain't hearing. You and I ain't seeing, and you know what? I, I, I've been using that thing with the hair, you know. I was went back east and I hadn't cut my hair in a long time, so I had long hair. And so everyone was asking, no, oh, you're growing your hair, Paul. And I said, well, I'm not actually growing my hair. I'm just not cutting my hair. Yeah. I have absolutely nothing to do with my hair's growth. It's not like I'm taking a few hours a week and growing my hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? And everyone would get the joke. But it's funny because the language we're using that we're hearing in here and then sharing it with each other is implying that I have something to do with something I have nothing to do with. Yeah? And I'm telling you, it's doing it on a huge level. It's, it's implying that you have something to do with a whole lot of stuff you have nothing to do with. It has, it's implying that you're the thinker of the whole thought system. It's implying that you're the feeler of all the feelings that are being motivated and, and, and uh, pr produced by a conditional I I idea getting, you know, like rubbed by something that doesn't seem to be going its way. Yeah? All of these ideas we take to be the owner and the doer of. You don't see that as the bondage of self? If you don't see that, if you don't look at thought by the point of view of being the thinker, or the thought about, you're never going to have relief from it. You're not going to become a great thinker. You're not going to be the one, only person who only thinks good thoughts. Yeah? There would still be the bondage of self as being the person who only had good thoughts. It's almost the exact same as being the person who only has bad thoughts. The consequences would be different out here, but the bondage would be exactly the same. Yeah? So the point is, is not to have, to stop having thoughts or only having good thoughts, just see, are you the thinker of them? And you know, it's not an absurd leap. It's actually fucking common sense when you see that most of the, op the activities of this body I have nothing to do with, you know? I'm not claiming to be that digester of my food, am I? I'm not claiming to be the pumper of my blood or the beating of my heart. Yet, a subtler aspect of this body, bodily function from the brain, a thinking process, I believe I'm the doer of that. And that's the rub right there. If you believe you're the thinker, the thoughts are going to have a lot of mojo in your life. Because they're getting it all from what you are, the mind. Yeah? The only thing that can give meaning to anything here is the mind. Yeah? We've given everything name and form. Name and form isn't yelling at us, I'm a tree. We gave it the name and the form. Yes? We've given everything all the meaning it has. And in doing so, we've given everything we've given the meaning and, and uh, form to to have an effect on us as a form and a name. Yeah? We've taken ourselves to be form and given it a name, me, and therefore we've given everything else a form and a name, and we have given away our power to all those name and forms for them to affect us. Yeah? So that we can be a victim by, from our circumstances, instead of having the incredible experience of outshining your circumstances, as seeing that you're so beyond a circumstance that in one, one sense you have absolutely nothing to do with the circumstance. I mean, lately I've been try I've been having a a bad uh, spell of helpfulness, yeah, wanting to be helpful to people. <laughs> so let's just say two simple things: look at thoughts and what's not happening. 
Yeah? Just to get a sense of that. You don't have to be realized or enlightened. You don't have to have 20 years of spirituality under your belt. They're very simple to see. If you just let an understanding in, see if it pans out for you. Are these your thoughts? Yeah? And what are most of the thoughts are about are actually something that's not happening right now. Yeah? Most of the thoughts are about a past and a future. Yeah? Yet right now, that past, the only way I can have any contact with it is through thought. Yeah? I can't see it, hear it, feel it, taste it, or touch it. There can only be thoughts about it. Yeah? And so how can that, that isn't so, seem to be so to me? You've got to see the power of mind. The past has no power to submit you or to impose its idea of what happened on you. You give it all the juice by believing it. Yeah. What would happen is if you saw that wasn't happening? Yeah? By the simplest rule, ruler, I'm not seeing it, feeling it, tasting it, or touching it. Yeah? It's not here. That last Saturday cannot appear in tonight, this Wednesday. It's not appearing here. <clears throat> and it's never going to appear here. So, what would happen if I saw that as not happening? Would I need to do anything more than see that? About my whole past. Yeah? It would still conjure conditional effects... But there would be a lightning, a lightning, and there would be an improved lightning. The more and more the immunity got stronger and stronger, the more attention and interest you'd have now, with no effort. And this now would lock you into what's available here, which is the obvious recognition of your baseline. You're not going to recognize it in the past, and especially through thoughts, and you're not going to recognize it through thoughts about a future. Yeah? That, the whole echo of the past and the future is to is to turn the volume down on that baseline so that you become the only relevant event. Relevant event. It's all about you. Well, in fact, this when you're hearing the baseline, it's all about the baseline. And there's a lack, or a lack of interest in the you. There's a lack of interest and attention, and that's the freedom from the bondage of self. You're the jailer, yeah? You're the convict, you're the free person. They're all possibilities, right where you're sitting right now. It's where your mind is resting. Yeah? If your mind is resting in the past, yes, it's going to provoke feelings, conjure up old ideas that could only be conjured up by you, by the mind, because they're latently not here right now. You would have to think about it to bring about those feelings again. And you'll feel the feelings of the past now. Yeah? The mind will use that activity to produce a feeling now that it wouldn't be produced by this, this night right now. It wouldn't be produced. And anxiety is not going to be produced by this meeting. Yeah? Everyone knows it's going to end sooner or later. Everyone knows they have like Agandas at home or a good movie. It's not a big deal. The anxiety can only be produced by the mind going to this fertile field of what's not happening, planting some fucking crops, watering it, and tending to it with its interest, and then it gets the big, <coughs> it smokes the big spliff of resentment or regret or guilt or shame for the being the doer of that past event. And then it does the same thing, it worries about you in the future, <coughs> and, and you never feel the feeling in the future, do you? You feel it now. So it, it, it intervenes in the possibility that's often here and it puts a mental possibility over it. Yeah. So now you live an interpretation, a mental interpretation of life. Yet all the while you're still right here living life, but it's seemingly unnoticed to you. Yeah. And of course that's going to produce a, a sense of lack and then you're going to be seeking like crazy to get that filled. How's that worked out? Yeah? How are you going to erase an imaginary problem? Even grabbing the eraser and moving towards the board you've already lost. It's an imaginary problem. There's absolutely nothing you need to do. 
Just rest in the surety that it's an imaginary problem. Rest there. Yeah? And great things will follow. Great things that will relieve you of all this mental burden, all this imaginary weight. So the best way to get out of something is realize you're not in it. Tell me how much time does it take to get out of something you're not in? No time whatsoever. Yeah? The solution is so fast because it's already here, you can't even conjure up how you got it. (laughs) You're just one of the many effects from it. This is just an effect from that. Now it's resting there. Like when I was out there using and drinking, my mind was resting in agitation, and so it was like a rat. Now the same mind is now resting in something that's reliable, and it's at peace. Same mind, ordinary mind and light mind are the exact same mind. It's what the mind is reflecting or resting in. If If it's resting in selfing, there's no rest to be found. You're agitated. Always trying to get referral or aggrandizement as a self, or like a, I was reading this thing, this book that was translated in France. French, so he says this whole idea of existing, the egoic or the the selfing, the selfing uh, modality doesn't see existing as being enough. I want to be living, but basically, living is an interpretation or a story reflecting how great you are. <laughs> It's all selfing, seeking its own relevance, yeah? So if it doesn't think existing, like shitting, eating, sleeping, is enough. That's why they say in Zen, hey, you know, you want to know the truth? Go to bed when you're tired, eat when you're hungry, yes? Simple like that. That's not enough for me. I want a life. I want to be acknowledged, yeah? That's it. So that movement of cultivating self, or to me, it's like, building a wall of mirrors so you get a reflection of you. Existing doesn't look that great to the self thing. It's like, fuck. You know what I mean? I want someone at least, I want to be on a reality show when I am eating and I am shitting and millions of people will be watching me. You know what I mean? That's okay. I'll go with that. (laughs) But this whole point is, it's through the existing what that baseline will become more obvious to you. When you see that your major agenda is of the body to get shelter, food, and clothing. You may, you may believe that you're, it's the fifth house you want, but that desire to want a fifth house is only coming from the need to have shelter, basically. Yeah? It's all like, an, a, a, like a, a, a mammoth production based out of certain instincts. Making a mammoth production and making a fifth house so much more valuable than another dwelling, when all you're really wanting to get is shelter. All you want is food. All you want is clothing so you don't, you don't freeze to death. Yeah? All you want is like a place by the fire at night with a social contact with the tribe. You don't need to have a throne and a big headdress. You know? Just like for me, I say, what would be the difference if I go to the beach and I sit on the beach and watch the ocean? if I was sitting on the sand or on a throne. I'm still going to see the ocean. And actually, I wouldn't have to pay a large amount of money to get the throne shipped to the beach and then have to get it out you know, back home. Of course, I'm not going to leave it there. It's my throne. So I've got to take it back. Sitting on the sand is so much better. Much simpler. It doesn't cost much. Don't have to carry a lot of shit. Yet I'm having the exact possibility that's offered from the point of view of the throne. Yeah. get more and more pared down. There's not much adding on to. It's mostly just paring down, economizing. Yeah. You always go back to the root. Always go back to the source. Like I've done these talks seemingly for 20 years and I we've only had one topic every talk. Yeah. Before that, I never... I was talking on thousands of things. But when I was introduced to this idea 
it became the last answer and I don't see any point to go any farther than it if this doesn't become clear everything else will be distorted you know no matter if you get the best polishing agent and you and you think you're right in front of the mirror all that activity will be dulling the reflective ability of the mirror unless you have the right view yeah? and in a sense to me the beginning and the end of all things is this addictive movement of mind wanting to be a self a long lasting independent separate entity yeah? can never be fulfilled so it's like an incessant unfulfilled desire and you know what it's like to have an unfulfilled desire can you imagine if your whole basis of living was an unfulfilled desire a mental hijacking of this event turned it into a seeking self referral machine looking for what it can never get enough of attention relevance being right and special and unique yeah it's insatiable it won't admit its failedness so the desire to become can never succeed it can only appear to be so it can never be so yeah so in its fucking arrogance it will already assume that it's the case it's become something and then it will want not to be that like it's become a loser or someone that's unlovable or who, who can't do this and everyone else can and now you want to unbecome that which isn't so to begin with or you're trying to become something that you don't think you are now and it goes on and on like that slinky one movement gives the energy for the next movement. This movement turns the tail back to the head. This head turns the tail back. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah? And of course, if you live under that unfulfilled desire long enough, you're going to have to do almost anything to get some relief from it. Voila! So then alcohol and drugs are introduced to you and you take off. And then they, let's say, fail, then pornography maybe, or shopping, or you become a serial monogamist, or whatever they call it, you know? Everything are going on and on and on and on, constantly, constantly trying to get relief from the initial addiction, which is the conditional mind's addiction to being a self. Yeah? Why not see that you have nothing to fucking do with that? Yeah? That this is an activity born out of physicality, manifesting through physicality. Its origin is mentality, but it is not why you are. Yeah? You are from another place. Like Jesus says, you're in this world, but not of this world. You're not of this world of mentality and physicality and, and objectality. Yeah? You're of an essence, not of this place. Yes? That's why when it comes like a thief in the night, it's like an aha, or a total whack. Something occurs, or an unspoken yes, or a shift that took no time. And yet when it happens, you see that it was always the case. That it was never, never not that way. It only seemed not to be that way. Yeah? But in fact, the seeming not to be that way had no relevance to it, because it was always this way. Always. Yeah? So now the mind, given up this freaking crazy idea that it's a self, trying to become a better self, or the authentic self, or the higher self, or the lower, or thinking it's the lower self, the terrible self, all of that stuff, it sees, hey, I may not possibly be that. What happens? If it, if it truly rings true to that mind, it will lose interest and attention in all that activity. And it will find fulfillment by the absence of that activity. Not through the act, not through the activity, or not through another activity, but by being, by recognizing the absence of that activity, yeah? By seeing it's not truly so, is the freedom. Yeah? And what's one to do then? Find out. Yeah? But that seeking will be put to an end. You won't be seeking and thrice and striving to find something you already are. You'll recognize that and you'll see it as an expression and you'll see others as an expression of that. And all everything in here is an expression of that. Yeah?
And that's that. I don't know what more you can do, you know. I just heard it and I entertained it. It's not a form of doing entertaining. It's on another level. It's the mind, just like the mind's entertaining, let's say your your pants are too short and everyone's noticing it and it will go on and on or someone says hello to you at school when I was a kid and I'd go home and entertain entertain it for five hours and what do they mean by saying hello to me? Yeah? That that thing comes very naturally to entertain. We're just giving it something else to entertain, another possibility. Yeah? That maybe you're not the thinker. Maybe what's not happening is not happening. Yeah? Maybe I'm not the one who's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. Maybe I'm the awareness of what's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and touching, which is consciousness, you know? Maybe I'm the awareness of that conscious event called seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and touching. And thinking. Maybe I'm aware of that conscious activity going on. Yeah? Yeah? I won't think, I won't see so much, you will sense the same movement is doing the seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the tasting, the touching. There's not five different, there's the same consciousness moving through different facilitators, and one of, one of its events is called seeing, one of it's called hearing, one of it's called feeling. But I would say you're even beyond that, you're the awareness of that event, yeah? Because at one point, this body's going to die, and consciousness won't be moving through it, in a sense. It won't be seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching anymore. But the awareness is still there. The awareness is all there is. The awareness is the context. Right now, there's a conscious event called manifestation happening in the awareness. But it's not affecting the awareness. Yeah? To me, that's the true, that's the true home base. Yeah? That's the home base where the game has been called. You just rest at that home base. Yeah? A lot of balls are thrown. You, the mitt never goes up to catch it anymore. You just watch and everything's happening. You see a lot of it happening, not to you anymore. There's a freedom in it. Yeah? So that's what happened with me, seriously. One of the things, when I entertained the possibility I was not that, and all the selfing is doing, which is the activity of the thought system of selfing, its first movement is the claim, yes? So now it's be, it claims to be the one who's hearing, the one who's feeling, the one who's tasting, the one who's touching, the one who's doing, yes? The one who's having. So it claims it becomes the proprietor of something that it doesn't own. It's like, yeah. So from that, that position, from that claiming, it takes advantage. It uses the thoughts, the feelings, the doing, the events, yes, the circumstances. It uses them to facilitate the bonding of the mind to this idea of being a self. Yeah? So the thoughts are now used from the point of view of being the thinker of them, to bond you, to facilitate the bonding to that idea of being the you. Yes? The feelings, now being claimed by the selfing, is used to facilitate the mind's bonding to this idea of being a self. Yeah? The hearing, the same way. See you, brother. The hearing, everything that heard, yeah, is now emphasizing the hearer of it. The hearer of it is a mental idea. Yeah? That mental idea now, everything that's heard is used to facilitate the bonding of the mind to that mental idea. Every problem is now claimed to be my problem. Yeah? Those problems now facilitate the mind to bond to this mental idea of being a self. So everything that it's claimed, through that claiming, whatever it comes in contact through that claiming, it uses that activity, thinking, doing, to become 
to emphasize the doer, the thinker, the feeler, the haver, the hearer. Yes? That's the activity. All day. It has to take away its biggest threat, which is the consciousness. It does that easily by saying, I'm the one who's conscious. You're not feeling good? No. I talk with me, bro, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll talk on the phone. All right. All right. See you, man. All right. (laughs) <laughs> You're getting old, bro. I know. You look like that's what's happening. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, you see it. Selfing. Movement is the claim. So what is it done? It became, there was a, it became, it noticed consciousness. Yeah? It says, I'm the one who's conscious. Which is the way it forgets consciousness, yeah? Now you become the one who's doing the seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the tasting, the touching, and the thinking, yeah? As soon as that's in place, this, what's ever seen, what's ever heard, what's ever felt, what's ever tasted, what's ever touched, what's ever thought about is now used to facilitate the bonding to the idea of being the one who's thinking, the one who's feeling, the one who's tasting, the one who's touching, Yeah? That's it. And our interest and attention is what gives it its mojo. Yeah? Because we think now everything's about us. Yeah? We're questioning, if we pull out that one pin, see what happens to the whole machinery. I found what happens is, you'll see it now. You'll see all the inferring after the thoughts have been claimed that there's the thinker and it's about me, you'll see it, but that pointing does not produce the moon. It's just pointing at an imaginary moon. You produce the feeling of being the moon by saying, I am the one who's doing it. I'm the one who's thinking this. I'm the one who's feeling it. That's the, that's the imaginary moon. Yes? All the pointing can do is point. It cannot make the moon. You and I buy into the idea that we're the moon, and then it appears to be so to us. Thank God it can only appear to be so, because that's the solution. If you take away the mind's culpability, if it wakes up to the fact I may not be that, then that will not appear to be you anymore. Yeah? You'll just see the pointing. You'll see the claiming. You'll see the inferring, the implying, the insinuating. And after you see it for a while, there'll be less of it. Yeah. Now what? You're inherently free as an activity from the bondage of self. Not 20 years from now when you finish your 8th degree of spiritual diplomahood. But right now, Wednesday night at this moment, you're inherently free. And after a while, having the sense of being inherently free, you'll get you're inherently free. No matter what it seems to be. Yeah? No matter how it seems, it doesn't make it so. Yeah. Whatever, however it seems, you have a lot to do with it seemingly that way. (laughs) And if that was extracted or not given over to it so freely, you would probably see it as a pretty weak, see-throughable, flimsy uh, production. Yeah? It's like in this movie, it ain't the movie that's good, it's the audience that makes it good. We play a big role in it, man. We play a huge role in it. We are totally complicit in this all. We're not, nothing's being imposed upon us. We're not a spiritual victim of a big, bad, evil thing that's going to victimize us of our spirituality. That's an impossibility. The mind is in cahoots with it. In Buddhism, they call it the cherishing of self. There's a cherishing, it's a quality. There's a love because we actually believe it's us. And we're really hoping that we're going to be special and right and unique someday. And especially if there's an audience to recognize it. That's the important part. We want to be noticed or seen as that more than being it, yeah? And it drags us to great lengths. It does. We beat ourselves up about things how we think we should have been when we're not even that thing that thinks it should be that way. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like there's no donkey to pin the tail on. All your little tails that you want to pin on you, you have to be the donkey for those those pins to hurt. If you're not the donkey, there's no place for the pins to land. They can't anchor in. Yeah? Stop being the fucking donkey. It's not even stop. Just realize you never were the donkey. And if you realize you never were the donkey, you'll realize you never are the donkey. And then you also realize you'll never will be the donkey. Yeah? It was an impossibility now. It's an impossibility in the there that's not now. And it's an impossibility in the then that's not now. It's just a damn impossibility. Yeah? But it feels so real. To who? Who does it feel so real to? Nothing feels real without a who there. Without a you. That's when it feels real, too. It's the two. Yeah? The feeling is just a feeling. What gives it the realness is the you, is the moon it's attempting to point at. You immediately take yourself to be the moon, and for that to be the moon, that feeling has to be fucking real. Maybe you'll get so exhausted from it, man. Because I tell you, it's diminished returns. Constantly diminishing returns. Yeah? It's like going to a well and you put your little limousine type bucket in and it doesn't bring up water, but it looks really good. <laughs> and basically what you're living on is images and symbols and, and replicas of old ideas of how you thought it should be. Nothing's translating into an ease and comfort right now. And all your solutions just become more burdensome, don't they? Jeez, they're more heavy and heavy and heavier. You're full of freaking solutions. Have you ever tried nothing? Try it. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Try nothing. How many somethings have we gotten? Tons of them. What did they add up to? Nothing. Why not start at nothing? See what that adds up to. I don't know, it's cool, I dig it. I haven't lost interest in it in 20-something years. Seems just to be reinvigorated every fucking day. Yeah? How wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? Why, in AA they say, what do you need? You need uh, for you to have a daily reprieve. Uh, it will be contingent on the maintenance of one's spiritual condition. Yes, that's, your, that's the deal. To have a daily reprieve from alcoholism, not from drinking, that's from alcoholism, it is contingent, so it's based on the maintenance of your spiritual condition. So let's change the contingency. What would happen, what would be contingent for you to do if you were a spiritual condition? It would be contingent on you to just know that you were a spiritual condition, and that would be the highest form of maintenance of your spiritual condition, which would lead to a, a pretty damn good daily reprieve from alcoholism. Yeah? So instead of having to acquire a spiritual condition, become vigilant about your supposed spiritual condition, Defend your spiritual condition because it seems to become unspiritual pretty easy when the circumstances, situations of your life change. Yeah, all of that effort and all that activity could be totally seen as purposeless or pointless if you are a spiritual condition. And if this place is a manifesting, manifesting yes, or it's in a state of being, this place, yeah, it's happening then part and parcel of what's happening here is your spiritual condition. And if you were aware as that, that would be, for me, the highest form of maintenance of that spiritual condition. I don't see any form, higher form than that than to be a spiritual condition. Yeah? Now, it, it would probably relieve you of having to go to places, though you may like to go to places, to feel the spiritual condition. You would realize... Everything you're feeling is from the spirit's condition. Yeah? You may not want to seek the truth anymore. You'd realize you're living from the truth, and that truth can never be experienced because you are inherently that, 
So all it can infuse all your experiences with its influence, but you'll never have an experience of that because you can't be something other than that to have an experience of it. Yeah, you are so close to it. There's no there's no way in hell you're ever going to have an experience of what you are. But all your experiences here will be influenced by what you are. Yeah. So this mythical hope that on one day I'm going to get it. Instead, you could be living from it every fucking day, every second. You get take that big gift, that big high is taken away, that you're going to get that. That may be taken away from you, but what will be, what will be offered will be the, the constant availability of that fact that you are living from there. <laughs> I would rather this, this, this is the proof in the pudding. This is just a pie in the sky idea. I would rather go with this, you know. <laughs> I would rather have something that has an incredible leavening agent every day of my life than to have this one supposed mythical leavening event that's put into the future, you know. I'd much rather be in the act of being leavened right now, you know. <laughs> it just seems so fucking practical to me. Yeah. Then you get free from the need to be liberated. All that stuff goes. You don't need. There's no fucking need to be liberated. The only thing that needs to be liberated is what you're not. So why would you need to be liberated from what you're not? Just realize you're not that. There's no need to be liberated from it. Realize you're not that. And then the real freedom is that you get free from the need to be liberated because it's part and parcel of the self. Thing. It needs to be liberated from itself, and self can't get out of self. Yeah. So how do you get liberated from that? You get free from the need to be liberated. Yeah. You're so here because the idea of having to be somewhere else is dismissed as being ridiculous. So you're here it's like when you were a kid. Yeah. You're just rooted in the obviousness of what's going on. With, and no, and you didn't plant yourself there. You didn't find the perfect hole and dig it deep enough and it's just the way it goes. Yeah? You have, a, you have a, a basis of living that's truly reliable. Because you're the nexus, you're the axis, you're the point of it, right? Where you are at all times, no matter how you think you are, you are that point. You are the pointless point, the centerless center. You are that which you're seeking. Yeah? Let that wash over you. Something in the mind knows this. Which just is like just the, the one of the only points of this is to tickle that mind. It's like dropping a few drops of gas in that in that frozen carburetor, and you just turn on the <coughs> which is living. You're going to be turning on the switch, the, the key, it's going to start. You don't want to pour more gas in, you'll flood it. Yeah? Let the mind get an aha and let it run with it. And let it entertain it for a while and see what happens. See how it downloads in your life. And then you'll be your own scripture you're reading. Yeah? You'll be the living scripture. Things will be revealed not to you, but through this. Yeah? They're obviously not for you anyway. They'll be revealed through this, and you'll re you may see it just like someone else may hear it. You'll see it yourself, right here. Yeah. So long as you play, put yourself in that role of being the conduit, the water must come. That's what goes on. That's the base. The whole premise of recovery is of service. What is of service? Is letting this power express itself through our group conscious here. A power that we can't see here, that's not in bodily form, but will work through bodies, will work through crazy assholes and be, smell like a sweet perfume, will work through all of us. And by its working through us, we'll animate it. And hopefully you'll animate it to realize that you are that which is expressing itself through you. You're not what it's expressing through. You are the expression. Yeah? This is just a fucking vessel. It's a vehicle. It's an interface. It's a conduit. Yeah? It's allowing something to occur. It's not what's doing what's occurring. And it's not what's having what's occurring. It's allowing an occurrence to occur. Yeah? 
the living of no thing into an experience of something. You've got foot in both worlds. You're in this world, but you're not of it. Yeah, You're in this seeming world of things and separation and time and bodily and mental and emotional harms can occur, yet you're not of any of that. You're not of time, you're not of things, you're not of separation. Let a little of that influence you. And how is it going to influence you? Hear the baseline. You are aware of consciousness. You are aware that there's consciousness. You may say, I'm aware that I'm conscious, but that's the language inferring you as the doer again. But there's an awareness of consciousness. Consciousness is making an impression here. It's coming through this this facilitator, and it's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and touching manifestation. Yeah, and there's an awareness of that. Yeah, I would say we are of that awareness. And yet we're in this this event called consciousness manifesting. We're in this event, but we're of awareness. So I don't go there, I just see what I'm not. Tell the truth of what I used to take myself to be, and if I'm not that, that's that. Then all this gets revealed. But you never gets revealed by looking for it. You'll blind yourself to it. It gets revealed by seeing what you're not. By seeing what you're not, what you are will become blatantly obvious. Because the distorting factor is you're being obsessed or up the ass of self. That's the distorting factor. That's what's making obvious, not seemingly so. <laughs> it really is. It's like a giant subterfuge that has to be gone. It's an activity constantly going on and on and on and on and on. But something that's more going on than that is what's always going on. That's the baseline. Yeah. Rest there. You can hear it. You can feel it. You can sense it as a presence. Yeah. You can almost see the space in this room. You look around and you, it's a palpable event, the space that's in this room. It's the most dominant, most it's the most influential thing in this room and it's of no thingness. And, and it's the space of this room. It's the space where the thoughts are appearing. It's the space where the feelings are happening in. It's the thought, it's all of everything that's going on is happening in this giant context of space. Yeah. Rub shoulders with that a little bit. So, no questions today?